Okay, it's recording. Okay, well, finally we got this together. We're, I'm very, very happy because Sarah, the way that we could work this out is I can introduce you to my Patreon group of people. They've been following me for a while and Patreon is a venue where you can share a lot with your, your followers. And then if you have time, you know, during the month, you can put them all on and they can all talk and have a chat with you. So I love Patreon. And I also said to the people in Patreon, if you want to ask Sarah questions, we could do it around the end of November. So, you know, this is just a preliminary. We're just talking and getting to, uh, um, my audience to know you. So talk a little bit about your background. You told me you're writing a brand new book too. add that. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, um, in case they don't know me, I got into all of this stuff by accident. I didn't decide it was going to be, you know, somebody that was going to learn about extraterrestrials or consciousness or spirituality at all. I was the opposite. I wanted to be a psychologist, actually. That's what I went to college to do. Um, and the reason why I got into that was because I was one of those people that had so many problems. You know, you see those people and you just feel sorry for them because I was overweight. I had all kinds of phobias and fears. I had OCD where I would open and close drawers. I mean, basically if people had a problem and I thought about the problem, I could get the problem. So I had a lot of problems and they never seemed to go away. So my parents put me in therapy and that's <laughs> how I had, yeah. Well, and that's you know, it the best, the best hypnotherapists are people that have been through it themselves. The yeah. best doctors are the people that have been through it themselves. You have to, you know, you have to be, you have to know what's going on. I am a good experiencer with problems. A yeah. lot of times when people come in with problems, I think to myself, oh yeah, I had that problem before, yeah. but that's why I got into all of this was to fix myself. But um, I didn't know about any other modality. So I didn't know about hypnosis at the time. So I went to college to become a psychologist. That was my plan. That was my goal. And something really incredible happened to me. It was life-changing for me. About two years after I got to college, I went back home to my family's house um, to visit for Thanksgiving. And when I walked through the door, there's a mirror that you see when you walk in to the foyer. And I, I caught a glimpse of my reflection. I hadn't really looked at my reflection in the dorm room because it was like a small mirror. So I didn't really know exactly that I had had any changes, but I, my jaw dropped. I had lost like 20 pounds. And I walked in, and I just started staring at myself in the mirror. And I thought, what has happened to me? So I was only away at college for a couple months. And by going away to college, I had literally forgotten to have all of my problems so I realized that I had changed my environment and I changed my thoughts and that totally changed my life so now whenever I have an issue I understand the thought patterns that went into whatever issue it is and I go about reprogramming my mind so I understand how powerful thoughts are but I learned that you know by accident and in that way but I still went and graduated college. And before going to graduate school, I had an internship where my job was to basically medicate the um, residents there and counsel them. And I felt like maybe after a week of doing that, that everything I'd learned in college was not what I thought it was because I wanted to do this to help people. And it was really obvious to me that this wasn't the best way to help these people because a lot of these people were just called crazy because they were UFOs or they were seeing alien, you know, angels and stuff like that. So that's how I eventually quit that. And I eventually got into hypnosis because I thought if this is really all there is to help people, then I don't want a part of it. So I quit. I didn't become a psychologist. In fact, I quit my whole career right then and there when I got to see firsthand in the field what it was really like and I thought there must be something more there must be something or something better so that people could actually heal themselves because when I was working in the field there were no success stories there's no one that came in and then never 
it was the opposite. Sometimes people would come in, have one um, medication that they would take, and then a couple months they would take 20 and they were being tested on by phar the pharmaceutical. And if they were involved in a test, they would have to wear a wristband so that if they were to die during their pharmaceutical study, that I would call this number and, and let the experimenting on them know. And these are people. And I just thought, this is not what I want to be a part of. I don't want to be a part of people testing other people for their gain. You know, I want to be a part of people helping people. And eventually I got into hypnosis. And as soon as I did, in order to become a master hypnotist, I had to do lose weight, um, past life regression, and quit smoking. That Those were the three <laughs> things you had to do to yeah. become a master hypnotist. And um, so the past life regression stuff was new to me. And I realized right away that someone could come in for a session and they could heal themselves. And that to me was something that I've been looking for. I wanted to find something that actually worked. The lose weight, quit smoking stuff was, eh, I mean, it was okay. You know, it was great to help people change their mindset and change their thoughts. But ultimately the regression um, sessions were amazing. And I started to learn through these sessions more about spirituality. So I studied well, what with you're saying is the lose weight and quit smoking were the other people, right? That you were trying to help. They came they to were, you for that. Right. It, well, in order to become a master hypnotist, you had to do those three things. So I had to do um, 200 sessions recorded and they were analyzed of people wanting to lose weight and then 200 sessions of people that wanted to quit smoking and then 200. Oh God. Uh, yeah. It, 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 you know, eventually you, you ended up writing a book on Atlantis and that's how I found you. And uh, you are our experiencer uh, person. In other words, you are our leader for the experiencer group in Laughlin <clears throat> so that everybody that's had any kind of contact experience comes to you in the morning between eight and nine. But before we had you there, I flew to Florida to meet you because I was fascinated. But I have to add, I was also fascinated with the book on Atlantis that you wrote because what you were getting from the past life regressions were was really interesting. All that stuff came by accident because like I said, I wasn't looking for it. It's funny because I didn't go out to try to do any of this stuff. And there was no way I could escape it. A lot of times um, the higher consciousness that would come through my clients would tell me, you need to write a book. And I think to myself, oh no, I don't want to do that. I'm not a writer. So all this stuff happened by accident in a sort of a, a forceful yet nice way. So, well, I can back up. I um, got into the Atlantis stuff by accident, like everything else I did, because I had this, this friend named Jen, who I asked if she could be my, uh, my subject for a class. So I needed to record somebody under hypnosis for this class I was taking. And um, I just asked one of my friends and she was not into any of this stuff at all. In fact, I knew that because we were friends for 10 years. And um, I told her, you know, this is a really great method because what happens is you can really look inwards and you can find out who you are, you know, your true purpose, and you can even heal your body if you have any issues. And that was when she told me that she was suffering from an issue that she never told anybody about, anybody from the school, but she was working really closely with a team of specialists from the University of Miami. And so she was very happy to be my subject because she was suffering from this brain condition called pseudotumor cerebri. And basically it was um, causing a lot of issues within her. And she had lethargy. There was a chance of a stroke. She had swelling in her brain, which caused severe headaches. And she was just put on this heavy duty medication. So that was why we got, we, that was why she became my subject. Not because she was into any of this stuff at all. So after the, fair, the very first session that we had, she healed herself and went back to her team of specialists and they couldn't believe it. There was, she was totally healed. But the reason why she was healed was because 
that brain condition brought us together. She would have never undergone a session with me because she wasn't into any of the stuff without a motivation. And when I talked to her subconscious, her subconscious said that that was our job, that the both of us needed to uncover this information and share it with the world because the world needed it desperately. So that's pretty profound and that's pretty amazing. And you were telling me that you have so many clients. What's what's unusual, you live in Key West, is that they all come to you. I mean, they fly they there to you. To you don't you don't uh, you don't fly around to their houses, they come to you in Key West. And right. um, for the people that will meet you at Laughlin, you can, you know, make appointments with Sarah because you know it's it's I think and you tape it all, it's very, very um, enlightening to go inwards and find out what your subconscious feels and believes and so forth. It is. I mean, because so often we don't really listen to that inner voice, but it's amazing when we do, when we really go inwards, we can learn so many different things. But then also when you go deep within yourself, you tap into universal consciousness. So I've been doing this for so many years now, and I used to think that there were different people, different beings, different animals, different races. And over the years after doing this for so long, I've come to understand that we're all the same. I mean, people say that, but it's really interesting to feel it. It's really interesting for me as a practitioner because I get this information all the time that what they're tapping into is universal consciousness and we're all the same. I mean, we all come from like one place. We're all everything, eternal, all of us. We're all part of that ancient group. I mean, nobody is really different than anybody else. Animals, you know, ETs are all the same. It's universal consciousness and consciousness has an agenda. And the agenda of consciousness right now is unity. So it's really interesting and fascinating to me, <clears throat> this little like game that we're playing, playing, so to speak. But did you want to tell everybody how you got into all this? Or well, they, I think my <laughs> the people know uh, that I got into it by watching Close Encounters. But the bottom line, and that's why we bond so much, is because the bottom line is consciousness. I mean, I could do data collecting. I mean, we're, data collecting is what I've been doing all my life. In fact, one of the questions that we were going to answer was, you know, what changed your mind? Well, I went past data collecting to what it means. I mean, you can only, you know, have so much data. I mean, I re can record only so many military witnesses and, you know, contact stories and, uh, you know, sightings and, you know, all of these things that happened over the years. But the bottom line is why are, are is this phenomena so important? And it is because it's there to get our attention. I mean, Jacques Vallée oh. was talking to me about that. It gets your attention. And one thing Sari said, he said, it really does because it's random. In other words, you may have a sighting and you're not going to have another one uh, when you think you're going to have it. You're going to have, it. it's like with um, Pavlov's dog, you know, when they, you give them something, they have a reaction. And if, if the ETs were giving humanity something so they could have a reaction, it wouldn't be random. When you have random things ha happening, it really wakes you up because you don't expect it. When you expect it, then you say, oh, yeah, there's another sighting or there's another anything. And it doesn't change you. It doesn't change behavior. But when it becomes random, and, it, and he makes me laugh because he says it's theater. When it becomes uh, random, it's theater. They're putting on a show. And then you have to ask yourself, where do we go from here? So you and I have had a lot of conversations in that. Where do we go from here in that if you happen to be lucky enough to be involved directly in some of this, they want you to do something. So oh, then yeah. you have to figure out what your individual contribution is. Mm -hmm. So we can go to the question of what is your individual contribution? Well, honestly, I feel like mine is as a messenger because this started for me by accident, like everything else. And when I wanted to work with my friend to uncover, and I'm so glad that you said that about things being random, 
but, and how profound it is. When I went to work with my friend to uncover all this information that her higher consciousness wanted us to share with the world, I asked her higher consciousness. And when I say higher consciousness, I mean, when a person is deep under hypnosis, I'll ask to speak with their higher consciousness. And that's the part of them that knows everything about themselves. Some people call it the subconscious. So I asked to speak with this part of her that knows everything about herself. And I asked, can you start from the beginning, the beginning of the story you want us to share? Because they really adamantly wanted us to share this information with the world. And I thought she was going to start from her childhood in that lifetime in Lemuria that I wrote about in the book, A Hypnotist Journey to Atlantis. But instead, she started from a, another lifetime as an extraterrestrial, which was so new to the both of us because she didn't believe in extraterrestrials. And I knew that because I asked her going in, what are your belief systems? And she said, well, I don't really believe in extraterrestrials. It, make, it makes me uncomfortable to even think about it. So here she goes to a memory of being an extraterrestrial. And I thought, what is she going to think? And then a weird phenomenon started happening in my office. So she remembers being an extraterrestrial and there's so many messages that this consciousness wanted to uh, share. And what really struck me as so fascinating was it was very spiritual. And I thought, this is not what I thought about when I thought about extraterrestrials, but the messages were so spiritual and of oneness and of unity. And I thought, wow, this is, you know, just really interesting and in how, you know, we're all here, like you said, to, to play a role and to do our part. So this weird phenomenon started happening in my office where people that didn't know one another, they didn't know that I was uncovering this information, started sharing mm -hmm. similar, similar things, or they would remember being an extraterrestrial and this consciousness would come through communicating. And it's wild, but um, you know, at Laughlin, I like to share some of these little clips where they come, where these people literally are under hypnosis and these, this consciousness comes through because there's strange clicking noises on these videos. It's, it's really fascinating. Really? Because, there's clicking noises that, yeah. because it's physical, isn't it? It's physical, but it's, it seems like it's random. But as I cut, as I've gone over all these tapes, I've noticed that the clicking, and it's a weird clicking, it doesn't make any sense that they'll be clicking on this, you know, you don't hear clicking. What it is, is interference, isn't it? It's weird though, I'll, I'll let you listen to it. It's like, it clicks during certain important words that they say. So, really? Yeah, so they when they share about how, you know, just, they share so much information. I get, I mean, I do this every day and it's, tons and tons of information for humanity and that's my role i i know my role already <laughs> is to um put it into these books or share it because that that's my role what is your role <laughs> my role is to communicate i'm a communicator i got a master's in education just to teach like to teach the only thing is i don't want to preach i i'd rather teach and teaching means in other words here's the data you decide not, not this is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. This is what you should believe. This was. I'd rather just give you the data. And if you have a, a a logical brain and you put together, and I have a book called Connecting the Dots, and I'm re reissuing it soon. Uh, you'll figure it out. And when people figure it out, it's a lot more uh, powerful than somebody telling you what to think. And my field, unfortunately, is filled with guys and women and people and, you know, researchers that are telling everybody conspiracy theory, what to think, what's the truth and so forth. But I've been in it for 44 years and I can tell you that the answer is there is no answer. I completely agree with you. <laughs> and there is no answer. I mean, it's, it's, it's what it is, is so weird and so dimensional I don't think our brains can wrap around it. It's like when Jack said it was theater. I never thought of it as theater. I, everybody goes, oh yeah, let's see the up there. They're seeing me. I'm so special because I get to have this sighting and, the, and I want to talk to them. That isn't anything like you. 
that that comes from another something that we can't even describe. So whatever that is, is having an effect on you, but it is not like anything human. So there is no way that uh, you, we can have a clear explanation. It's just like in my field, I mean, the ignorance level, I call it UFO Disneyland. They've separated all the ETs into reptilians, greys, and Nordics. Well, the, the Apu, which is in the constellation of, of Alpha Centauri that Ricardo Gonzalez talks about, that Nordic is nothing like the other Nordics that came from Venus in the 1950s. You can't lump people together. There is right. a new movie, movie that just came out, James Fox, and we're going to show it. It's called Moment of Contact. You can see it on Netflix if you want to see it in advance of the Virginia case. Those little creatures, and they were creatures, had uh, reddish oily skin and three um, protuberances like on the, the bumps on the top of their heads. Big red eyes. Where are you going to put them? They don't go into the reptilian gray or or whatever. Mm -hmm. The, whatever that was, the crash in Virginia, Brazil, and that story is amazing, is, doesn't fit into any box. And the only thing that I can say is good about me, Sarah, is that I don't have a box to put anything in. I have no idea. You know, That's so I'll, I'll just talk about it, but I have no idea. What would you love to teach people if you could teach them well, and set them straight on something that you know because you've been in this field for so long that they read <laughs> that, that, that they read for you know the book trinity that is bestseller that jack and i just put out it's about a 1945 crash and and two little boys who were present during the crash who saw the beings well what do you want a movie i mean what do you want youtube it's detailed hear what they said, what they lived, their feelings. People don't read anymore. It's like, as a teacher, I, you know, if you were in my class and you were a senior, you had to do 2000 uh, word essay at the end. I mean, you went to college, you went to school. Yeah. Did they say, go on YouTube and get all the information and write a paper? <laughs> well, I'm old now, you? so. <laughs> I mean, is that what they said? Go, go to uh, YouTube and look up everything on this. No, what the problem is when you're studying anything, including psychology, geology, uh, zoology, I mean, you're going to look up Diane Fossey's work, the original source on gorillas. You're not going to go on YouTube and look up gorillas in general. You, and this is what I'd like to teach people. Go back to an academic thinking. Because what happens is you're, what you're getting quick and dirty is somebody's opinion on what happened. You're not going to the original Diane Fossey who was with the gorillas. And I don't know how to say it any other way, but if you want to study something, it for me, this is so serious because it has to do with consciousness. For me, it's not entertainment. Right, right. What do you think the message is that you wish to share with people I mean, I love that to read again, you know, to actually absorb that information and find out and research yourself. Well, the message is the same one you said, because the bottom line is consciousness. It's like that's yeah. the graduate school. It's like we're all one. But the problem yeah. is that's being used too much. You know, everybody goes out, right. we're all one, unity, kumbaya, let's all say. That isn't the way it works. You can't right. just say it. I'm convinced anymore, if you want to give people a sign of what that's about, you have to live it. You have to be the model of what comes out of your mouth. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I mean, and it's really hard because I've seen, you know, just meeting you, you're, you are exactly the way you seem. You're ethical. You're, you're nice. You don't even think, you don't even look at all possible negativity. And yet the world is not like that. So the only way we could get through this is to model it and let everything else slip off our back. Well, I ask in these sessions almost every day because my clients will come in with questions about what's happening with you know, the government or what's happening on, on the earth. And I'm very interested in these questions too. And you know, constantly, I mean, all the time, I hear the same message that there's nothing to worry about. 
you know, do your own work. The most important thing you can do is to work on yourself and um, that there's so much help that there's like, you know, special light hitting the planet that a lot of this fear-based stuff is just, is fear-based and it's aimed at, for one reason, it wants, you know, pe some people would rather you be in fear and generate well, you that can feeling. Control, you can control the masses with fear. There's only fear right. and love. There's only right. fear and love, but you can control the masses with fear. And I'm glad you mentioned the government stuff. Oh, I, that doesn't bother me. I'm still doing my thing. I mean, they're not going to dictate anything <laughs> that I want to do. And and I've never felt that way. I've never, you know, you do what you do, and and you you can vote, you can be part mm -hmm. of society, but in the end, it's an individual contribution. It's individual. So you are by yourself. You're not attached to your family. Your, okay. your soul is by itself. And whatever you dream, you can create. So if you waste your time thinking about fear and how all this is coming down and what am I going to do? Think of the waste, the waste, the, the, it, it doesn't, I used to say to the kids, worry has no value. You can worry for, and then I used to say, if you're going to worry, worry for an hour and a half, really before the thing happens, you're going to the dentist, you want to worry, worry really hard before you go for an hour. And then before <laughs> that, before that, have a great time, have some ice cream, go on your bicycle, and then choose to worry one hour before you go, but worry really hard. Because if you spend three days worrying, what value does it have? I know. And, and, you know, it's so funny because the higher consciousness that comes to people all the time, just like what you said earlier, they always say, well, you're literally creating your own reality. Sometimes they get really in depth as to how, and it's really over my head when they talk about like the, the way the earth looks with the grid systems and, oh my gosh, I, I don't, I don't claim yeah, to but understand those are interesting. any of that. But, but Sarah, they're interesting concepts, and a lot of people have written books about that, the, the magnetic grid system. So what you do then, if you're interested in that, is you become a scholar. You started looking all the books and start looking at all how that happened and why they build the pyramids on a grid system, why they right. build uh, these cathedrals over an electromagnetic field, Why they because the religion already knew about it. Back in the old days, they already knew about all this stuff. So, but you read, you don't go on some, you know, podcast where they have, it's coming off the top of their head. Right. And that comes from my, from my being a teacher, because if you're going to write a book about the electromagnetic grid system, you better give me at least seven books and footnotes. You know, it's like, <laughs> I, can, I can't just have you just throw things up in the air like that. So it's, I'm so glad you said that because what, what you're telling me is that you're learning a lot about it from your clients. You're learning. It's like, you're the student and they're the, I'm the student, but what, what I ultimately learn over and over again is literally that we're creating our, our own reality. So they're constantly telling my clients, you know, it only matters what you believe and what you're focused on. And if you're focused on a certain thing with emotion and belief, then you're literally creating your own reality. And they brought it up before, you know, to my clients, but it's like the Mandela effect where some people literally remember Nelson Mandela dying in prison. Yeah. I'm one of those people. I remember because I was in school and they showed it on the TV and then other people don't. So people have different realities and they're literally creating their own reality. So sometimes when you hear a bunch of, fear-based stuff if you take it in and you believe it and you create you start to take yours then it will be true because everything everything is true I mean everything anything that you true. believe yes yeah isn't that yeah. crazy everything is true you just said right. it well listen I I'm hoping for my Patreon people that we could do a chat where they can ask you questions I would so, love that. and yeah so they could come on and you could see them on the top of the screen and they can ask you questions so I'm very grateful for this short time today that you were, and we're really good friends. We have fun apart from everything else. We have fun. And I, I'm very grateful that you have said yes to, to this. And let's, let's do something the end of November together. And then we're thinking of doing 
um, a podcast together uh, at the end of November, right? And we're going to mm -hmm. call it integrate, integrate, which means that all these ideas need to be integrated. Uh, so we'll you'll see that on my on my website and on Sarah's website. You'll see the you'll see the banner uh, with the ticket um, to to be part of that to listen to that. And you know. You're so wonderful, Paula. I mean, because you're helping so many people and you really are a communicator. You find different people and you share, you know, information with so many other people. And it's amazing what you're doing. You're such a legend. I mean, no, no, be... well, no, I have fun. no, I'm a teacher that likes to play in the in the sandbox with other kids. <laughs> 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 I look, it's no fun playing by yourself in the sandbox. So thank you right. so much for, for being part of my Patreon today. Thank you.